Video 5 of the Broken Spears. Now, what happens in the main massacre of Toshkotl? It happens on the May 22nd on 1520. We know from this because of different sources. From the Codis Ramirez, the 13th relation of Albatl Sochitl. We also see the Codis Aubin. And all of these three sources describe the massacre of Toshtakul, Toshtakul, sorry, when the Mexica people were commemorating with Chilopochtli. What happens is that Cortes is absent from Mexico City after he takes Moctezuma ransom. He gets word that a, um, um, a person has come to arrest him. That person is Panfilio de Narvaez. Panfilio de Narvaez comes on the orders of Diego Velázquez, the governor of Cuba, who is very upset because Cortés left without permission. And upon hearing that he's uncovered a great civilization with lots of gold, Diego Velázquez wants to arrest Cortés and take over the expedition. So Cortés hears of this and goes to meet Panfilio de Narváez. And upon meeting him in the shores of Veracruz, Cortés murders Panfilio de Narváez and promises the thousand soldiers that were there to arrest him, to follow him, and he would lead them to gain lots of riches. In the meantime, as Cortés leaves, Diego de Alvarado is left in charge. And during this period, the Mexicas, even though that it's been months since their Tlatuani, their, their leader has been uh, kidnapped in his own palace, and has loosened much of the authority, the people argue that they must celebrate the main celebration of the of the god which Lopochtli. This is very important because this is the first ethno-historical sources that we have about how people worship Huichilopochtli. And in none of those sources do they tell us about human Aztec sacrifice. On the other hand, what we have is a horrendous act of treachery that usually has been left out of the historiographical scrutiny to understand present-day violence in Latin America. What ensues is that there is a big description of how the Aztecs gave status through dance, and that is that at the center of the of the uh, of the temple in this plaza, when the dance is taking place. They have drums and they have an effigy, an effigy made of, of, of seeds, of grind up seeds. And in this effigy, people are dancing around this effigy. The dancing in circles explains the hierarchy of the Aztec military regime, in which you ascend hierarchies in the Aztec warrior, warrior uh, levels by capturing people alive and bringing them to fight in front of everybody in Mexico City. This is the way that people celebrated other events, meaning fighting, usually for Tlaloc to ask for rain, but that's another part of the story that we should get to later. The point here is that as the Aztec warriors and the main 400 warriors of the Aztecs are dancing, Without weapons in this plaza, Diego de Alvarado sees this, digo, sorry, Pedro de Alvarado sees this as a good opportunity to get rid of the elite warriors of the Aztecs. And therefore, they close the four gated plaza in which the Aztec warriors were dancing. And as they are dancing, they are distracted and the Spanish begin butchering everybody and it's one of the most horrendous and descriptive acts of treachery that warriors of those times were not accustomed to because there were many rules for ritualized warfare and killing somebody out of battle was certainly not a way to achieve honor and that's why it's interesting that in these ethnographical sources we are described not only the complex preparation and ceremonies that many women go through, like many of them, um, in order to, to participate in the fiesta, they have to, they have to fast for up to a month, and, and the whole preparations of the fiesta takes a month of, of, 
of, of ritual activities. And so therefore it becomes very shocking when the warriors get killed and therefore there is a huge uproar and rebellion, the result of which is that Moctezuma, when he tries to calm down the people, therefore ends up being killed. We don't know who kills Moctezuma, whether it was the Spanish that killed Moctezuma because they saw that the people were not listening to him anymore, or as some of them say, it was the people themselves who throw stones and arrows at Moctezuma and the people, the Mexica people themselves are the ones that killed their captured leader. What unfolds is the next chapter, which is called the Night of Sorrows. In the Night of Sorrows, what we have is that Cortes returns with a thousand soldiers. As he walks into Tenochtitlan, he is not well aware of what has occurred. And for some reason, Cortes is allowed to walk into Tenochtitlan without any resistance. He learns of what Pedro de Alvarado has done and realizes that the Aztecs are plotting to attack them. So they decide to escape with all the gold and the, and, the, and the booty, the gold booty that they have gotten from the empire, and they try to retreat. As they try to peacefully retreat back to Tlaxcala and to the Spanish galleons in Veracruz, as they try to retreat, the Aztecs attack them. And in this attack is where the Spanish would have lost their attempt to invade Mexico. But what we see is something very strange where even after they are defeated and they run for their lives and Cortes loses most of his booty and many of his men, what we see is that enough people in the shores of the lake help Cortes in order to get back to Tlaxcala. I'll have a map and I'll show you more about this later. What ensues is Cortes is able not only to escape but to do an amazing long trek across all the lake back to Tlaxcala and they regroup and then march back forward to siege the city of Tenochtitlan. There in the city of Tenochtitlan, what we have is a complex, is a complex uh, uh, discussion between different sources of the events that happened during these battles. Okay, so we will review some vocabulary now. Vocabulary such as Quetzalcoatl, who is Quetzalcoatl? He is he's a, he's a mythical god king of the city of Tula. Quetzalcoatl would be the deity figure which is thought to have confused Moctezuma. For this, we gotta understand the worldview of the Aztecs. In the worldview of the Aztecs, when they arrived there, as we recall, there has been thousands of years of civilizations, oral narratives, books memories that have been written on stones. Among these most important memories is that of a mythical king by the name of Quetzalcoatl, who abandons the city of Tula because he was disgusted at the practice of human sacrifice. So in the mythical accounts of the Aztecs, Quetzalcoatl had left the city of Tula and had promised to return. However, uh, uh, this idea of Quetzalcoatl returning to wage vengeance on the Aztecs seems to be in pair with the idea that the Aztecs did practice human sacrifice. As I said, I'm part of the anthropologists that disagree with this interpretation. Therefore, this is a complicated issue. Whether Quetzalcoatl was, uh, was seen as returning in the face of Cortes or not. Another important character is Huichilopochtli, who is in translation, left-handed hummingbird. He is the main god of the Mexicas. Who is this guy with Chilopochtli? We should, we should see that in very similar ways as Quetzalcoatl is this type of, of, of people that were, at some point, real humans, and after they die, they become transformed into deities. Okay? Which is very different from the supernatural phenomena of gods like the god of rain, Tlaloc, another interesting god of the supernat of the of the natural phenomena is Ehecatl, the god of wind. Tlaloc and Ehecatl, in this ideology, they were never men; they were always forces of nature. So it's very important, kind of, to distinguish between idealized deities and and mythical warrior kings that after their death become legends. Now, 
Tonalamatl, the Book of Destiny, is basically read by the Tonalpowaki, the person that understood the dynamics of time and the calendar. Now, the Tonalpowaki, he would be a person that you would seek to after you have the birth of a children. You will ask the Tonalpowaki to tell you what the name would be. Other important names, Tezcatlipoca, Smoking Mirror, the god of the power of nature, the volcanoes. Smoking Mirror alludes to obsidian, which is a dark stone in which the Aztecs are known to use for uh, reflection and also for weapons. Uh, we also have, um, in more words, Moctezuma, the kings of the Aztecs, remember, when Cortes arrives. We also have Pedro de Alvarado, who is the one that perpetuates the massacre of Toshcatl. We have Princess Tlisochetl, who was the brother of the Lord of Texcoco and who quickly converts to Christianity and burns his mother's rooms to make sure that she converts and helps the Spanish. We have Jacotzin, which is the mother of Tlisochetl, who converts after her room is burned. We have Tlaxcala, which is the city-state that was never subjugated by the Aztecs and who became an elemental ally of the Spanish. We basically have names like Huitláhuac, Malitzin, Jerónimo de Aguilar, Gonzalo Guerrero, all very important names in this, in this uh, 16th century encounters. Now we've reached the end of video 5. We will continue with more videos later. Have a good evening.